I'm here. I think I'm here. <laughs> Let me see if you're here. If not, that doesn't matter if you come in on the replay to watch this. That would be awesome. Thank you for being here. If you're here on the replay, if you're here live, welcome to a rainy Spain, a turn of events. Oops. <laughs> But I have put up the umbrella. The equipment is on underneath the umbrella, so we should be okay to go. Let me make sure that I find you. So I've got my little Tupperware here. See if I can follow the chat. If it gets a little bit too drizzly, then I'm going to have to move my secondary device under the umbrella so that it doesn't get wet. And there are some drizzle spots, so I'm going to move you guys. Maybe I won't be able to see chat as much, but I'll do the best that I can. Just want to be on the safe side here. Hello, Fernanda, Nascimento, Orchids and Succulents. Oi, Portugal. Okie dokie. So, we're going to get this done, C or C. <laughs> because Insolence 2.0, I would have done this a week ago, but seeing as... I would like to do a live stream with a phalaenopsis, see if you have any questions. This is not just about transition. This is in general, if you have any questions about working with an orchid that looks a little bit rough, but has new root growth. That is the most important thing. If things are a bit too dark, also let me know, then I'll work a little bit slower. With the YouTube app going live, stream, etc., I cannot change anything about the exposure. But anyway, so yes, root growth is the most important thing. My preference is that never ever do I want to work with an orchid that has roots already this long. And that is my personal preference because I'm a bit of a klutz. And these roots are super precious, but since we saw her last in the introductory video, this root has extended and she is growing a third one up here. So we are in luck. Hey, hey, Ana Maria Matesanz, Gadea, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Hello, Ermina Noven. Hey, hey, it's good to see you too. Yes, it's not the usual sunny afternoon in Spain. I had no rain predicted at all, and all of a sudden at three o'clock we had a bit of a shower, which is fantastic for the orchids that are outside. And then I thought, okay, let's see what happens, how long this, is, this will take. I put the umbrella up, that's why you've got this kind of a sepia look. So I hope that you can see everything, and I hope that you can hear everything as well, seeing as we are without any filters on the mic. Now, my beautiful Insolence 2.0, courtesy and thanks to Michelle Fucarino. Jose Joseph, it is so good to see you. Orchid Ninja Director over here, over here, over there in Kerala, India. So good to see you. Hello and welcome. So anyway, Michelle Fucarino made this possible. I'm so happy. Uh, the first one we'll probably discuss in another live stream. I'm still waiting for feedback on that, but we're going to address her. Now, whether you're transitioning into LECA and self-water, the word transitioning, in my opinion, is always, always sort of combined with, well, it's going into inorganic media from organic, but that is not the case. Any repot from whatever media you're putting it into, into the same media, same kind of consistency, be it organic to organic, that media is new and fresh and responds totally different to what the root system is accustomed to that it came in. So you could, you could actually determine, according to my definition of repots, any orchid that comes new into your collection is being transitioned. Whether you change organic to inorganic or you stick with organic media, it makes no difference. The important thing is to wait for the roots. The media means nothing in this case. The orchid has to transition not only to your environment, whether you got her from the nursery locally or whether she came in online, it has to transition also into the media of your choice. The consistency of the media doesn't mean anything. Julian Sun, good evening. I'm saying good evening because it's that dark out here, so I'm hoping that the camera can compensate somewhat. 
Quel dommage that we are in the circumstance of having to deal with a little bit of a cloudy day. The Angrecoids are loving it. <laughs> They're not with the umbrella today, but yeah, might be things a little bit dark for which I apologize, but I thought better just to go ahead with it and not cancel it or shift it around. Because also I want to get this orchid settled, get her sorted out. I don't want longer roots than they already are. Right, so another thing we're going to find because we can already see that is what everybody calls the plug of doom and death. Okay, I have my opinions about this. I don't call it the plug of doom and death. It's what we do with the knowledge that an orchid has that in the center that determines whether it is doom or death. In my opinion, doom or death, hapana, because you can see here, that new root has extended already into that sponge thing. And look, it's not dying. If I were to let it go, it would grow through that and be absolutely fine. Because what you do with an orchid that comes like this, it can be a phalaenopsis. In most cases, it's phalaenopsis. But when you get the media that is a little bit off and you're not ready to repot, you don't have time, you don't have the right conditions yet, you don't have new root growth yet, what are you going to do? You've got the media that you're working with. Some people go ahead and repot anyway and then hope for the best. And most of the time it can work, but sometimes it can fail because the old root system once again is accustomed to what is in the pot. It's not accustomed to any kind of other media you're going to put in, no matter your good intentions. It's all fresh and nice and squeaky clean. No, this is something you need to work with in order to make sure that when you do your transition, your repot, that your timing is always spot on and then it's stress free. So in my climate, because I don't heat, I don't use heat mats, etc. My biggest key for making a, any kind of a repot work with Phalaenopsis, specifically, of course, Leca semi-hydro, was temperature. To get a steady temperature that is warm enough for these warm to hot growers, and then everything is hunky-dory, especially, of course, in my situation with Leca, there is evaporative self, there is evaporative cooling in the self-watering pot. So you see the temperature will drop as well a little bit. But I did do a comprehensive video, I believe it was a masterclass video, where I said if you can't repot, how to tide your orchid over in circumstances where the media is icky, you don't like it, you would like to get your hands in there, but you're going to work with the pH until the timing is right. And then nothing happens with your orchid. Another thing I'd like to debunk as well, if that were still to be out there, I know a couple of years ago it was, you cannot transition an orchid into whatever setup you're going to have, be it mounted even going into wet dry cycle. You cannot do that while the orchid is in the old media. You cannot prepare old roots for a new culture. You have to respect what you've got in the pot. You've got to work with what you've got in the pot. You've got to try and maintain whatever live roots you may have until the new roots take over and start doing their job. So you're talking about maybe four or five months where you have to make sure after a repot that any roots that are still viable in the pot, that they will stay viable long enough, if not stay alive, but long enough until the new root system can do the job. <laughs> you do have sun. Yes, I was just watching the golf, Hermine and Oben. Ole! Spaniard won the KLM Open. <laughs> La Raz La He's a bit of a mouthful, his name. So I saw the sun there. I'm saying, that is why we have rain. Okay. Right. Anyway, so my new product that I'm not going to use exclusively is back to fill, but I figured she is in dire straits. Let's see if this product will also do some magic. And well, I've got three roots. Let's see how they progress and how they perform over the next six months, because that is how long I've got when it comes to this orchid before my temperatures drop. That is how long I need to have her get settled in. So don't be afraid of that plug. In my opinion, it is only a matter of pH as you work with the orchid until you are ready to repot. 
You know what? I do love these clear pots here as well that don't have a rim. There's no circling of the roots at the surface. I'm going to keep this one. And maybe I should uh, think of my masks that I can't find the right inner size pot. I should look for these clear orchid pots and then maybe I can use the masks and continue using them. But the sizes I've found, they're too big for 15 centimeters. So yeah, as per what we could see on the outside of the pot, it is shambles, shambles on the root front. Nothing really here to write home about, but again, who cares? We've got potential, it's on its way. And you're probably thinking, why aren't you cutting the spikes off? Well, first of all, one I'm going to use for staking and securing my orchid into the pot that it's going in. And secondly, I want to see if she's going to absorb her spikes. If she decides to branch on one of the spikes, I'm going to stop that branching from happening. So for the time being, it's all about observation and seeing how this orchid behaves, what her needs are. And if she needs her spikes, I'm leaving them on. So you can see it is very pathetical. It is not a pretty sight, but it will be very, very soon because we're going to deal with that. Even this crack because of the new roots. If I didn't have new roots coming and I needed to get into this pot because let's say my time schedule needed to have it happen and then I, I couldn't, let's say, address an orchid for the next four weeks, I would leave this root on, crack or not. But because we've got new roots coming, that crack is coming off. Ooh, yes. This is going to be very satisfying. Okay, let me get you down a little bit closer. You don't have to be so shy. Let me wash my hand, even though we're going to get dirty again very shortly, but still. So yeah, now if it's not, let me just check and see what the cloud cover is doing because oh, I don't trust it. There's fluffs of white and fluffs of gray, so I don't want to risk it. Okay, we're going to be on the move. If you get dizzy, I'm going to tell you when we're stable again. Let's get you down. Let me make sure that I don't... <laughs> There, okay, I know this sounds mean, but there's one advantage to this weather. King is not outside. <laughs> he's a wiener dog. He's a hunter. But I've got another dog that doesn't appreciate the rain. So if anything jiggles on the tripod, that would be me. So let's just uh, see that we get you in as close as possible. My beverage can get diluted by rain. Let's see if we can get you in even closer. There we go. Now, here's the thing with this sponge as well. If you're going to transition, not necessary to lecker, any media, if you're going to repot and you remove the sponge, what's going to happen whether the roots are viable or not? If they're dead, well, we are past that step. But if they're viable, trust me, if you're going to grow a Phalaenopsis in a wet, dry cycle with bark, the roots are going to die anyway because they are very accustomed to this very high water retentive center here. So you're not actually saving your roots by going in, removing the plug, putting it into fresh media because the media that you're putting it in with bark is super dry in comparison to what these roots are accustomed to. Not to say that you should then put sphagnum moss around the roots to save them, but you can pass that step, for example, and you can rest assured because you've got new roots coming, it doesn't matter if they die. Doesn't mean you cut them off. Again, you need that, let's say, five, six, six, eight week margin, maybe longer for the new roots to do their job, okay? But don't think that you're doing anything wrong by when you're, if your center roots die, because you can see how nice and viable these are, they will die because the Valaman has grown accustomed to being in a very wet environment. Now, in my case, do I have any hopes that they are going to survive in my lecker and self-watering setup? I don't mind either way. I would say if they, if they live, great. If they don't, who cares? Not bothered. New roots. That is so, that's the beauty of waiting for new roots because you're not in actual fact risking anything. Amina Zamekina, hello. Good morning. I hope your Sunday is off to a great start. 
Good morning. Let me make sure I'm still in shot. Every time I move, I feel like I'm going to go out of shot. So why do I care about then being careful? Because at the end of the day, if they, if it's not that important, I'm getting new roots. Why do I care about carefully removing the sponge center? I just like roots. <laughs> and any support, any support at this point is super duper welcome. And this goes, if you get a phalaenopsis, summer bloomer, whatever, we don't want wet, dry cycle and summer bloomers. Let me qualify that. They like a lot of water, but if you get all that in sphagnum moss, you want to make sure that all the roots in there, when they go back into whatever media you're choosing, they get as much water around them as possible. So sometimes people say, oh, look at how much sphagnum moss is in this pot. It is so compact, so tight, the roots can't breathe. They're getting suffocated out. That is another thing I would like to say. Don't worry about it. They grew up in that environment. They're accustomed to that environment. If you now put loose packed sphagnum moss, just loose around roots that were tight and surrounded by moisture consistently and packed together, and then you do everything loosey goosey, it's gonna, it's gonna cause roots to fail. Not all of them, but some. So if you see tightly packed sphagnum moss, it gives you a signal that this orchid likes a lot of water. Not this one, but I'm saying in the case of tightly packed sphagnum moss, it likes a lot of water. And that is what, old re what we need to respect when it comes to old roots. So if you have that situation and you want to refresh the moss, tightly pack, not squeezing, not cracking, but tightly pack and wrap those roots into moss again and then get that into a pot and make it nice and snug. This will reduce the amount of root loss you may have when it comes to an orchid that comes in sphagnum moss. So thankfully I don't have the nasty odor. Julian Sun says, yeah, there you go. I usually leave the plug, the springtails take care of it. That's another good point. That is another good point. I don't have springtails, but yep, that works as well. I think that there's too much, let's say, um, stress about even seeing stuff like this on the old media. So that could be mold, that could be a little fungus. Easily dealt with if you have to tide your orchid over with some hydrogen peroxide and then flush the pot through. It doesn't mean it's going to be there for long, but if you don't want it to spread and if you're concerned, a spritz of hydrogen peroxide or give the pot a little bit of a soak halfway up, it'll take care of all that very, very quickly, efficiently until you're ready to do your repot. So here I have a gorgeous root. It's a shame that I'm going to be working on it. It's got a little bit of a branch here that's affected. So I'm just giving you my thought process. Got a crack here. It's still firm up here. Clearly it wasn't affected, but up here by the stem, it's already, you know, the velamen is dried and it's coming off. You can see the steely, at least I hope you can. So that is coming off right at the base. Now, if your orchid has very little roots, if you're not sure about staking, if it's one of those that's going to be super top heavy from jump, which mine is not, you can also leave an old root system. <laughs> yes, you can on the orchid and hopefully it can help you with some anchoring. As we're planning to stake the orchid into the pot, I'm not going to have that consideration. Now, ideally, my OCD wants to get all these things out here. Ooh, but they're tough and the roots are already too long. If they were just nubbins, I would go in with some secateurs and try to slowly unwrap, unpick. Ooh, I think we've got a fourth root coming. She's a root grower, yay. That gives me hope for the rescue one, but I'm not gonna mess with it, okay? So these are things where you have to choose your battles. The optics, yes, we liked everything nice and squeaky clean, but then what are the risks? What could happen? And maybe you would get cross with yourself, the fact that you even tried. So leave those little things. They're only there, let's say, for six months, maybe a year, because sometimes 
after repotting, when things have settled in and you see new growth coming, new roots, etc., coming, some people also say it's a good idea, especially if you're going into inorganic media, to then take the orchid out of the pot, take off everything that might have died within the pot, and repot her because the new roots will by then have gotten accustomed to their new environment. I don't do that. But that is optional. That is absolutely, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Oh, and she wants to branch. Oh my goodness, the more I'm seeing this root system, the more hope I'm having for my very weak little one. The OG, the original. I'm going to show you the branch. Let me just get rid of something so I don't cause any unnecessary abrasions on that branch. Everything is precious. There we go. Woo, another branch, you guys. Oh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Ooh, we've got a critter in there. Fingers crossed for the OG. Can you imagine at the end of the day having two? So let me see if I can see, I can at least show you in the dark. Hopefully you can see that branch right there. Oh, yeah, I know. Here's me in focus. This is where editing is so handy dandy. And I saw another branch down here. Check it out. There is hope. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Yay. Because I thought when I was trying to put the other one into swag and bag method to rescue her, I thought, well, if she is a reluctant root grower, like my Bubba is, then we are in trouble. We are in trouble from jump. Now this branch, no, this, I thought this was soft but it's not, it's firm. So we're gonna leave that to see if we can encourage that branch. Any branching that's coming from an old root system that was in the old media is going to directly get accustomed to the new media straight away. So the failure of, let's say, this root with a branch, just an FYI, this root here with the branching, which is up there, if it were to fail down below the crack, which is right here, this is going to secure the lifespan of the new root. That is awesome. Yep, she's busy. <laughs> this is exciting. I'm so happy because I was almost thinking, oh no, I got myself another bubba, but nope. Okay, here we have, oh, she's branching. Ah! Look at the crack, but she's branching. And up here, she's, she's a bit soft right here. So I'm tempted to cut that off, but I'm not going to. No, that's where I'm going to make my concession and say, if the root fails, okay, fine. That would be one out of maybe three or five. I don't know, but I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to hope for the best in that case. So we'll choose our battle with that one. And that would be it. But you see, it's just one little thing. I did do this right at the beginning. Michelle, hello, it's good to see you. Oh, here comes King. <laughs> he figured, well, if she's outside, I'm coming. It's good to see you. Look, insolence. She loves the root system. She is not only growing the roots that we saw on the surface, but she's a brancher. And a second, I've even seen a fourth root come out of the stem. This is awesome. Anyway, this is what I did when I first got her. And I'm not going to spray the alcohol on my paintbrush in front of everything, in front of the camera, because obviously I've got other things. Ah, <sighs> my spray bottle is plugged. Tsk, 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 tsk. It's been doing that recently. Okay, anyway, paintbrush saturated with alcohol. In we go. So she got a light misting when she first arrived. But now that we've got her out of the pot, we'll just do a little bit of due diligence and just go into the base, the harder to reach areas for once when she's in the pot and we don't want to be jiggling her around so much. So I've got that cracked root, my branching cracked root. I'm just minding that in my visual. And here's the thing as well, thick cuticle orchids, if you were to spray mist or do anything, do that during the daytime, because that's when the stomata is closed. 
There is no danger of blocking the stomata, even if you want to wipe underneath the leaves. Do not do this late, late afternoon, early evening, even when you think, oh, nighttime's a good time. On thick cuticle orchids like this, including cattleyas, you don't want to be messing with the stomata unless it is absolutely daytime. Now, you may say late afternoon, look at what time it is where you are, and I'm saying yes, but my daylight is only going to be like dusk at around 8.30. Take that into consideration, depending on the time of year. When will your climate, your environment, have dusk, or when is it that you switch your lights off? Thank you for the vote of confidence, Michelle. I appreciate that. Much, much needed. Okay. Thank you to Instagram. Oh, um, go. You saw that. Yeah, I have to get better at promoting myself on my platforms. I really do. I know that many people follow me on Instagram, and sometimes I feel I shouldn't repeat things, but mm, it's not working. I have to somewhat repeat the information. So that worked. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. So we've had a little bit of evaporation. Now you may say, okay, that's a bit daft. You're now going to wash off the alcohol. Well, I wanted it on here pure before I go in with my sprayer, just to see if I can clean out some other little bits and pieces. If this is too cumbersome, if it doesn't work, if I don't get everything off, shiny, shiny, like my visual would prefer, I'm not going to be bothered either, because as she is going into inorganic media, the little bit of stuff that stays behind, it's better it stays on the velamen if it wants to stay on the layman, on the velamen than trying to yank it off just because we feel better about it. Let me tell you, you'll feel much better if your roots survive than you wanting to make sure that all your roots are super duper clean. So minimal intervention just what comes off easily okay now when let's say if i have just washed everything off it doesn't matter we've taken care of at the base of the orchid any kind of little eggs or pests or something not snail eggs because i'm not using hydrogen peroxide while she was in my care here during those days i did not see anything that in any way shape or form gave me a signal that there are snails in this pot. King, arret, get back. Sorry guys, he's right here. King says hi, clearly. <laughs> so what you see here, let me see if I can lift her up and show you. This is not snail damage. Whoop. This is any kind of other damage. Goodness me, that camera looks really dark. I hope it's not going to be. King, stop. This is not snail right there now that is probably mechanical damage maybe media brushing up against a root nubbin from when she was being shipped unpacked put on the shelf bumped around somebody probably knocked her over on the shelf the bench in the nursery as well it wouldn't surprise me where she came from people don't really they don't care you know what happened to her when i was buying her of course like i said in my video i didn't qualify why i said I paid full price because when you looked at the orchid when I got her, you would think, for real? You know, <laughs> other countries would say that is a discount orchid, but not in the place where I got this one. But anyway, so she was, you know, these long spikes and one of the stakes was loose. I just hadn't taken the attachments off to loosen them from the, to loosen the spikes from the stakes. I wasn't interested in the blooms, but they don't know that because they don't think like us. And the lady at the counter was trying to help me stuff the steak back into the pot. And I was telling her, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. And she was trying to help me and then reposition the blooms. And I, I, was, I felt like saying, look at the blooms. Do you really think they are showpieces that warrant this effort? But anyway, she was trying to do her job. and I, Seeing as I had already seen the first root come, I wasn't going to fuss. I just wanted to get out of there. But the stuffing of the steak back into the pot had me super concerned because whatever is live in there, you could be stabbing a live root and that would be the end of the root. So 
Yeah, you can really tell <laughs> she meant well. And I was like, oh, you know, the, the neck hair on the back of my head, they kind of stood up a little bit there. All right. Hey, it's good to see you, Sandy. Sandy's orchid's in the house. You're on your phone. Oh my goodness, you have a power outage. Oh, well, here's the thing. Let me tell you something. I, ha I don't have my fridge connected and I don't have my hot water thermos thingy boiler connected either because I needed my extension cord. Um, I am connected, but I'm still with an umbilical cord to another property. So I hope, I hope, Sandy, that everything comes back into place very, very soon for you. The reason I'm still attached to the umbilical cord there is because of the high humidity we've ha been having. I know, shocker, right? Over the night, and sometimes the fuse would trip just because of the humidity. And of course, if you have unexpected rain, even though the forecast doesn't say so, then it's even worse because you have a guest in the house and suddenly we are without power. So I told my landlord, I am not disconnecting my desk or the fridge or the hot water until <laughs> I'm comfortable. So grin and bear it because I have to grin and bear it. But because I needed my extension cord, and that is why I can feel for you, Sandy. Hope everything sorts itself out very, very quickly. And let me get you to the left side because now all we need to do is pot her up. Let me get my orchid back into the visual. Long spikes, I know they're gonna be a little bit cumbersome. I don't know if I'm gonna poke my eye out, but um, I was indecisive about which pots to use. So usually when I have the situation when I'm filming and editing, I kind of think, make the decision by myself. So I'm going to wait and see what you think. This orchid, this is an 18 centimeter pot that is seven inches. And this is a 20 centimeter pot. I think it's seven inches. And this one is then seven point something inches. Now, this is my orchid. She's a happy root grower. And before you say, yes, you should put her in a smaller pot because, because, remember my setup is going to be lecker and self-watering. The environment is going to be wet, see or see. If you were to grow this orchid in a wet, dry cycle with bark, a little bit of sphagnum moss, etc., smaller pot, absolutely. So I'm thinking, I'm not saying I'm doing this, okay, because I just thought, no, I'm going to bring out two pots. I'm not going to prepare anything because now I've got feedback. So, of course, I'm thinking long term with my setup. I don't have to repot once she's in the pot. I can go all gung ho here. Of course, I have to have in the back of my mind the space issue in winter. So, you see, it's not as simple as one, two, three. If I had another annex, then I would say I'm definitely going with a big pot and happy days. So, let me see what your feedback is. What would you do? The smaller pot or the bigger pot? And I will follow whatever it is that you decide. That is the beauty of being on a live stream. In some cases, you can call the shots. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Clinton Carmen in the house. Saluti Bella. Or should I say, ciao Bella. Thank you, Carmen, for being here. Amore. Lola. Smaller part for Fernanda Nacimiento. Orchids and succulents. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. Seeing as I'm staking her, I'm not concerned about anything toppling over. If you're in a similar situation, smaller pot for Orchid Ninja Julian's son. If you're in a similar situation, you know how big, look at that umbrella now blowing. I don't know, you can't see it, but it's about to, I've got it tied up. <laughs> And we've got sun now. Do I dare? Do I dare move it away? You see, let's just say you're in a similar situation like this. Look at the size of the leaves, okay? I still am going to do what you guys tell me, okay? Uh, that is what I appreciate about people who come to the live streams, who take their time on a Sunday. Y'all call the shots on this one. But look at the size of the leaves. So, similar situation, another little bit of a thought process would be 
to think of how top heavy that orchid is going to be. That she's going to be a big one. She may flop. She may come out sooner than you think. She, the smaller pot may not be the right option because there's not enough base to support and sustain what the orchid really needs long term. While I fiddle around with my umbrella tie here, low budget production. <laughs> my patio is my studio. Okay, I'm gonna move the umbrella out of the way. If you hear any creaking, that is me cranking the umbrella. That are, those are not my bones. <laughs> but I think we can, we can relieve ourselves of this fabulous sepia color. Ugh. But white umbrellas in southern Spain, <clears throat> yeah, they're not, they don't look the part. Make sure I don't knock my tripod over. Okay, we're on the move. I need to scooch you a little bit. Sorry about this. At least I didn't cancel it. I keep telling myself. I comfort myself in the fact that I was on time. I didn't keep anybody waiting. And we're still live. Here we go. Can you see the difference in light? <laughs> oh, maybe I should tie it off right here as well. Whoop, there we go. Now watch. Thunder, psh, downpour. <laughs> that would be my luck. So there we go. And by the way, that was a joint of the umbrella. If you heard some, some weird sound, that wasn't me. Okay, what have we got here? All right, so I was just talking about pot size. Consider long term, consider the size of your orchid. Consider the eventuality possibility of the orchid toppling over. If you say, yes, I'm going to put a rock in the bottom of the pot, consider how much smaller your pot size will become as well. Consider all these options when you make your decisions. Meanwhile, you have opted for the smaller pot. And by popular demand, we are putting her into the smaller pot. And then we shall see if in a year's time, I'm like going, um, guys, <laughs> we'll go up another pot size. All right, let me check the smaller pot for Carmen as well. You see, Carmen also got a rescue orchid. $7.99 to four, you know, he's growing. Oh, <laughs> isn't that so lovely? I'm telling you, I was so happy to see this insolence. I had spotted her in the garden center a couple of weeks before, maybe even six weeks before but I left her because I still had faith in my OG and I saw that she was growing a new leaf back then, but she wasn't growing any roots. So I just said, walk away, walk away. And I did. And then Michelle Fucarino, I cannot believe it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, please. <laughs> just like with my ninja raft, please, please still be there because I took a photographic memory shot of the orchid, her stature, her leaves, how the leaves are shaped, what bend did they have, what damage did they have also? Everything, I studied her just as a visual so that if she were to, for example, not have blooms anymore and I couldn't identify her, all her funky characteristics, I, identify, I would be able to identify her by everything that she had going on leaf-wise. Because yes, even if she had no blooms, I may have gotten a 15% discount, but not more possibly full price. So I really looked at everything and I took a mental image of every single thing on this orchid just in case, because if I had to go back, then at least if I get a 15% discount, it would be less than what was before. But this, anyway, I repeat myself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle Fucarino. Thank you. Then we'll have another live next summer. Yes, we will. Yes, Jacqueline has great success. Yes, she does. Absolutely. Okay, I would think the root system would have a better grip on the smaller pot precisely. Yes, now that would work as well. Seeing as she's branching, Julian's son, I think you're onto something there. You would go for a bigger one. I know, I know someone who grows in traffic cones. Yes, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Spray paint them white. There's an option. Huh. That's interesting. Okay, Sheila, please don't be mad at me. If we were to take a poll, which I can't do because my hands and I don't want to fiddle around with a device, the smaller pot has one out. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to work with a smaller pot. And then if she does well, I keep, I keep saying if. I would say, 
2019, actually even up to 2020, but we had Bubblicious, a successful repot for Bubblicious. I should say she is going to grow well because I've learned a lot since 2017. If I had been filming this on a live stream in 2020, I would give you gazillion, gazillion disclaimers. The only thing that can take this orchid out now is pests and me being complacent. Those are the two factors because she has the whole season up until mid-November to get accustomed to what we're asking her to do. And then the winter comes. It's perfect. I love it. So I'm going to refrain from saying if, because I know this is going to work. I know. And then I did that with um, the, my nube, my big white-lipped fowl. I did that as well. I was confident. I did a, not a stream, but we did a col collab with um, Trisha's Orchid Life, who was transitioning an orchid for the first time, following my instructions. Her survived and is doing fabulously. My nube collapsed. To this day, I have no idea why to this day. I'm still baffled. That's why now I have Romeo's nube. Okay, so I know this is primitive, but I don't buy kind of some insulating spray. I use the stake of the fowl and I just sellotape it at the bottom, even though the bottom of the stake is covered with plastic. I don't trust that stuff. Okay, now I'm going to leave the stake for as long at the length that I need it. No, wait. I'm going to leave the steak. Let me start again. Excuse my primitive drink bottle in the back in its original length so that I can cut it afterwards so I don't shortchange myself here. Okie dokie. Next up. I said I was going to use a spike as my tie. And we have to also consider the direction of growth. So I don't mind Phalaenopsis that like to lean. I want them to lean, but what I don't like is the weight of the orchid when she grows well to start lifting herself out of the pot and then forward, back roots start to get exposed also at the base. In my super dry climate, they won't find their way into the pot and then we're back two years later repositioning her. If that were to be the case, great, that means she's grown well. But initially, I'd like to take all of this into consideration so that I can kind of leave her alone for as long as possible. Now, we do have that. We've got that here. It's all a little bit floppy, but it's going, that's going to change when Lekka goes in. But I don't like the spike being in front, so we're going to work with the spike that is actually already closest to the stake, which is the other one. And then we're going to determine height. Maybe if the leaf would l let me get in there. Thank you charming leaf and then we're going to determine height and this is where it gets fiddly and this is where I start talking as if I've got only one word in my brain at a time because we need to get a wire in there before we do anything else so I'm going to take her out again this is the worst part in out in out fiddling with the roots getting the bark to fall off that's the least of our worries it's what's going on now, this in and out and in and out, this jiggling. And as you can see, I haven't put any lacquer into the pot as I normally do, because I don't want anything in the way of getting, you know, again, abrasions. Don't want to bruise anything. Oh, that root, that root, <laughs> that was the selling point. If it wasn't for the rescue, if it wasn't for needing a replacement, that root, I tell you, I was like, don't be too happy because if they will volunteer a discount at the desk, if they saw me squealing with delight <laughs> at the bench, then they will think, yeah, no, no discount. She loves that orchid. <laughs> I didn't want to give my game away, but I didn't get a discount. <laughs> okay, we're just going to ensure that this is tight. Now I've taken the smaller gauge wire just because I didn't want to fuss and fiddle around here too much because the larger gauge is a little bit stiffer than this one. And I can only use the larger gauge when the orchid is already established and I'm staking her, putting her back in position because then I'm not worried about everything else that could influence what's going on now. 
Okay, so where's my daughter when I need her? <laughs> that worked so well. Oh, that day when we got those separated. I can't tell you those dendrobiums, man. Oh, when we did the first one, I really had to. You know, after you've done a marathon, you're kind of buckling over and you're breathing heavily, hands resting on knees. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> oh, I can't even think of it because my heart does the same kind of contraction as just going back, muscle memory. <laughs> I was so relieved. Now, I don't know if you noticed in the comments, well, anyway, let me just tell you because I didn't say anything about that in the video when I was mounting the orchids that aired today. This, what I did with the dendrobiums was supposed to happen a year ago, 12 months. I was planning that project for 2022 and I just couldn't make myself do it. Also because I didn't have a plan. I was thinking, of course, the inorganic mounts, of course, they grew well, other orchids are growing well. But the, the cutting part, ah, oh, the cutting part. I was like, ah, oh. so when I did the video and asked, you know, my patio tour and I said, any suggestions would be welcome. I kind of knew what I needed to do, you know? <laughs> But I was hoping that somebody would come up with something and say, la, 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 anything but rip the orchid off the mount. You know, no, I was, ne I was never going to do that. But the majority of suggestions as well said, you need to get in there and cut her off. I'm like going, no, that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> but it is what needed to be done. So you see, I've got her in position now using the spike. At least I hope you can see that. She's all not holding her, you know, hands free, all that fun stuff. And now we can do the rest of the procedure. Fantastic. But let me check the chat first. Carmen says, does LECA still work even if it's not semi-hydro setup, just LECA? Nope. Nope, unless you keep the LECA damp by always flushing water or nutrients through. If you pour water through, you've got to keep the leka damp if you're going to use leka only in a pot because it will dry out and leka will act as a desiccant. It starts to draw out moisture from the roots. That is the downside about keeping leka, you know, getting leka dry. You can't, you can do a wet dry cycle. Let me just say, you can do a, a preliminary, a kind of, hybrid wet dry cycle where when you see the outside dry you pour more water through but you will see any root tips that are touching leka on the outside they will probably fail unless your humidity is 80 to 95 percent consistently throughout the year then they would work because the leka will pour, absorb the moisture in the air but not as a wet dry cycle only media. For that, you would want to use lava rock if you want to go down that route. Where is my jug? I know I had my jug. Where is it? Oh well, I must have been pouring something somewhere else today. Huh, okay. Do you know that I also still cannot find my hydrogen peroxide? <laughs> I don't know. I thought I found it the other day, but it was another bottle. It had nothing to do with orchids. I can't find my bottle of hydrogen peroxide. It's blue. It's like this one. This is red. Same bottle in blue. I have no idea. Anyway, let's do the gentle submerged potting up method. And that was silly of me of, for pouring water in there because I have this fantastic Greek yogurt tub with water and lekker. Doi. Okay, well, something's going to benefit from RO water and it won't be the orchid. She's got plenty in there. Okay, there we go. Oh, I was messing around with bleach today. <laughs> My grubby orchid jacket is now totally grubbiness. It looks like some kind of a batik thing that you'd, you would get in Kenya, like a sarong or something. <laughs> I think I'm in need of a new orchid jacket <laughs> because you know I wipe my hands around the front the other day I was in a store and I thought I better get myself some t-shirts and they didn't have black 
my size in black. I want black because you don't see the dirt so much. And I already had two white ones in my size in my hand. And I caught myself and I said, Nina, what are you doing? <laughs> you know that's not going to work. <laughs> the first time you hold a pot, you put it on the shelf, you wipe your hands on the front. That's it, you know. So I put those shirts back. <laughs> This is not a hobby at this point in time in my life where I can deal with white shirts. Imagine me filming. I've got some mega repot pots to do uh, further down in the season. Me running around in a white shirt, lifting a pot and then turning around and it's like, -da -da. no, that's just not happening. All right. Does Lekka, Danny did use Lekka and Ceramis in wet dry cycle. Did not work very well. She had to water twice a day. Thank you, Julian Sun, for that confirmation. And that's where I'm going to leave it, at that. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, I'm, not that I know what you're telling me, but, well, you know, some, sometimes people need to find out on their own. But if you ask a question, you will get the answer, and I promise you, and I'll also give you variables that will work for you. Ceramus is even worse than Lekka when it comes to desiccating roots. Okay, my poor Belina, I'll be back. <laughs> I only use a vase on watering. Okay, right, Belina is gonna be fine. Belina is gonna be fine. Okay, so now with this method, I've only got large Lekka in here. Large Lekka, large chunky roots. It's plenty, lots of aeration. If she continues along the lines that she's doing with all the branching, if nothing goes horribly wrong in the pot, as in, you know, we've seen at least four branching points. Two of them, 50% will have made it through this process, definitely. So you think also she's a bit low in the pot. I want her low in the pot. I don't want the roots to be faffing around at the surface. I want her for her first year just to settle in and get solid. Now I'm also using the gravity, the pull and everything to keep her from flopping over because I don't need abrasions in the pot while she is growing roots. Established orchid I'm not too fussed about, but this one is now secured also in such a way that even the leaf and the spike here on the right, they are part of my support system. So what looks a little bit odd, there's method to my madness. I like to, huh, I always say err on the side of caution, but I, I would like to say if I can preempt issues, I want to cover my bases. That's probably a better way of describing it. I'm just going to fill a little bit around the back. I know that you can't see this unless I turn the pot around, of course, but I'm so wary again of the jiggle. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We don't want to be too confident. And this is where this app is a real problem. I could switch the light on with any other, if I'm using another device, and shine a little bit of light into the darkness that you see here, but I hope you can see enough. And if not, maybe my jibber jabber clears everything else up. So we are good to go. And now, another thing I like to do with orchids is make sure that I am observing and watching the roots all the time before I fill around with more lecker. This is an issue right here, so we'll work with that. But first I want to see if I can get lecker to pile up around here while leaving this root to find its way down into the pot. This way I can watch it go. This way I can keep the Lekka nicely wet at the bottom, pull her down. Seeing as my ambient air at the moment is 80% humidity, it is so bizarre, it is awesome. I feel as though this would be the year I should be growing my big vandas. Of course, I can't anymore. They're not here. But I know it's gonna get rough and tough in maybe about four weeks time. But right now I'm thinking, this is vanda weather. And I lost all my vandas. Just got me and my copper, me and my failing RO system, and then me and my terrible, terrible water in the mains, and then top it all off, dry climate. So <clears throat> what I'm seeing here in the back, 
is another little thing because when we drain this pot these are going to be exposed remember to try and recreate as best as possible no matter your media recreate up oh, we don't want lecker by the root tip i think i just bruised that root tip i'm seeing something came off yeah i bruised it that's a pity let's hope that she has tenacious and that she just says ugh, not bothered and continues growing and that is why i don't want leka around root tips like that and i go into to all the trouble to create a little bit of a canyon so now because the steak is coming out at the bottom of the pot we've got a patio that we can just pour that water in and put the pot back and then we can see if we need to build our little pyramid here a little bit more again recreating the climate as best as possible that's all we can do is do the the best that we can and make sure that the humidity well the reservoir will never be empty going dry anything like that flushing here is going to be an issue i can already see the headache i've got ahead of me so in this case, because everything is teeter-tottering, it's a bit wobbly, all of this. This whole thing right here, me trying to respect these roots, don't want them to dry out too much. I may even put a microfiber around here just to, you know, add a little more, which is something we can do right now. Let me just dunk that in some water. My flushing here is not taking the pot out of the mask. The flush here will be raise the water up in the mask to a level and then raise the mask and as I just did, tip the water out and put the mask back, put the pot back in. Okay, if you can turn it around, undyslexic undice that one. <laughs> so raise the pot and then tip the water out. That will be my flush. There is going to be a little bit of fertilizer going into the reservoir now. Meanwhile, she had her back to fill for what it's worth. And then because those roots are down there and viable, I am going to put fertilized water into the reservoir. And you can see how it's rising and bubbling and make sure I am not putting those roots in water only. This is not a water culture thing. We don't want to dry the roots out. They are not accustomed to being in water permanently. They should be like resting on the water, just like they were in that nasty media right at the beginning. And if it's too much, nope, it's going to be all right. Ha <laughs> ha! Nadal, fist pump of victory. That's me. Good stuff. Yeah, that's it. Wait, one more thing. Woohoo! Una cosa más. Her tag. Look! Look, look, look. Dun, 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 dun. Coolio. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. Oh, goodness me, am I relieved. So there we go. Flushing every second to third day. Again, within the mask in this case, because everything's like <laughs> not very secure, for lack of a better term. The spikes are still attached. Again, this is live. The background is a mess. The spikes are still attached and they're gonna stay attached. I'm gonna watch those. I'm not seeing any nodes wanting to do anything of interest. That would be one node right there that could try and be in insolent. <laughs> Isn't that a good word? Could try to be insolent and do something, but if that were to branch, I'm gonna nip that one in the bud, even before it creates any buds. Same with here. These nodes up here, here, Anything, anything I'm seeing that I don't want to have happen now, except for root growth, it's going to come off. And I will have absolutely no qualms in doing so. Okie dokie. So we've got that. I'm just trying to think of an orchid that is pretty in bloom to show you. The Roy Tokunaga is pretty in bloom, but you can't see her. Oh, the Dendrobium unicum is as well, but hmm, on a mount. 
So what I'm going to do is at least find a position, sit down and see if you guys have any questions. Maybe just stare at my pyramid of Giza. <laughs> like a contraption. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't such a bad shot initially, so we'll do that. We'll get rid of this, at least tidy it up a little bit. I mean, you know, some kind of an effort. And now we've got glorious sunshine. <laughs> Typical. Anyway, this is fine. This is just fine. If you're okay with it, so am I. Oh, just make sure that I don't jiggle anything. All right. Let me just qualify this. I don't know. Okay. Um, Carmen, I hope everything's okay. Yes. Hello, King. Hey. Does anybody have any questions? Anything, even with regards to organic media? If you have any questions about anything, this is not about, you know, the one and done kind of grow method, lack of self-watering. It just happens to be so for me. That would be, you know, if you have anything like that. Also trying to replicate something similar if you want to just use lava rock. That's perfect as well. Lava rock would be awesome, but my pots get too heavy. I can't do it anymore. Sorry if you heard me swallowing. Oh. <laughs> oh. Danger. I can see danger happening. I was already so happy we got this done. Oh boy. King Aret. I forgot to cut that steak. One thing is poking my eyes out with a spike that is flexible. Another thing is leaving the steak the way it is. So we'll just cut that off. Comsa. We have ourselves another one. I keep all these steaks. You never know when you need them. The thick ones are the tough, hard ones to come by. It is pesado. It is pesado. There we go. Aquí. All right. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. Carmen says, I have 20 orchids in Lekka and I'm putting their each of their vases now and putting a bit of rainwater from yesterday. That's great. That's great. Yeah, make sure that Lekka doesn't dry out. And that is also when it comes to, let's say, orchids that are supposed to be winter resters and dormant. Dendrobium and osmum, I had mounted, grew like a... <laughs> I don't even think you can use the word grow when, <laughs> when talking about that orchid. But it was just not... It wasn't working out for the orchid. It could be a dud, I don't care, but I've changed it, switched it up to Lekka and self-watering now. We call winter resters to keep everything on the drier side, but it's the setup that determines what you have to do. The same with Catacetinae. The Lekka has to stay damp. It doesn't have to be as wet as when the orchid is actively growing and growing fast, etc. but it cannot go dry because the roots in the pot are alive and they will dry out. Meanwhile, with Catacetinae, it's not that big a deal because if it happens, you just chop it off and, you know, repot the orchid. But why? Why? It's, it's not that difficult just to keep that Lekka damp. It's super important with this setup. Initially, Lekka self-watering, when it comes to this case, it's a little bit more work, it's a little bit more fiddly, it's a bit more of a pain in the derriere, you know, now I have to consider king, better please. Now I have to consider how I go about, you know, flushing this orchid, but it's, you know, it's only like six months. Come winter, where I'm, I'm just going to be so happy that it's all done and we'll be filling around with Lekka soon enough. And then possibly have roots growing out through the holes at the bottom because of all that branching. But yeah. So if in doubt, if you don't want your root system or you're, you're scared of the root system being damp, if this is new to you and you think, you know, dry, let it go dry a little bit. Don't, don't let it go dry all the way. Ever, ever. At least you'll notice that it's worse to let it go dry. It'll do more damage to the roots than... If, you, if you're hesitant, at least flush the pot through and then give it a little bit of nutrients. And if you don't want to have a reservoir, observe it every single day. Because I tried a wet dry, a dryer setup with Lekka, 
can be achieved by using only large leka. And then, like I said, all you do is flush through, but then you have to flush through every day. My cat, Leo Shiliriana, at this moment in time is in the same setup as this one would be with only large leka because cat Leo Shiliriana do like a wet, dry cycle. And as the orchid herself is not growing so well, I wanted to be very careful as to how I push my preferred, my preferred setup on an orchid that is already not growing very well. So, it, you know, just poco a poco, gently, unfortunately. Oh, orchids are slow growers. So when you say, yeah, that's going to work, you won't have results in three months. That is the norm. You need to keep at it one season, two seasons, sometimes even three seasons as is the case with my Dendrobium anosmum. I've had that orchid since September 2018, and the first two years on a mount, it was garbage. Now I've had her first three years, I have to look back. No, yeah, yeah, first two years on a mount. The next two years are in self-watering. The cane she grew was <clears throat> same length, if not a little bit shorter even than the previous one. I have two buds, <laughs> which for an anosmum is like, what? <laughs> Why bother? <laughs> but I have two buds this year. I didn't have buds last year. I did the previous year while she was on a mount. She's already growing a new growth. Now, year three, and this is me getting to my point. I'm sorry, I do get a little bit long-winded. But now, year three, I'm kind of thinking if the self-watering setup is to work and the and the anosmum is not a dud, that is when now she should be making much bigger progress. I'm not expecting, you know, a meter long cane this year, but I would like to see double the length of what I had bef last year, the previous two years, double. Now that'll give me the signal that we're on the right track and she's coming out of a funk and we'll get to working with her and getting her to what, you know, we know anosmums can do. If this doesn't happen this year, I've got a dud. And that will be five years of working with an orchid, changing the setup, observing and watching to understanding, is it what it needs to be before actually deciding it's a dud? It's pretty, <sighs> no buds on your anosmum. Oh my goodness. Oh, we've had some funky things happening in our orchid collection, hey? Who was it that, oh yes, Todd's Tropicals showed his beautiful Nuya Phoenicia falcata in bloom, in full bloom. Now, this time of year. And I, and I left a comment and I said, oh my goodness, that is astounding. Mine, she is just busy with the roots. There is no sign of a spike. And he said, it is so atypical for that orchid to already be in bloom this early in the year. And I just thought, hey, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> the strangest things are happening, absolutely. But we can do nothing but, you know, take our time, observe. And if we can hold on and stay patient, maybe we'll get rewarded, then it feels so much better. But there are no guarantees. The worst part is that after such a long time and nothing changes, there is no difference. Then you can scratch your head and say you get another one or you just live with what you've got and, you know, at least it grows kind of thing. Five years as well. Your Neo is in spike? Dang. I'm going to look at my Neo much, much closer now. I took her outside when it was raining. Let me have a look. I know you can't tell. Oh, I've got root tips for days. What a pleasure. <gasps> wait, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Slowly move slowly. I've got spikes coming. Oh my goodness. Now, I'm going to say they weren't there this morning. <laughs> because truly, you have to look really, really closely to see if there's even anything. A ver. Let me move my pyramid of Giza here. Aquí. And let me bring you and show you my Neo. Oh, the roots. I love the roots because once the spikes start really pushing and she wants to bloom, the roots stop. So I'm thoroughly enjoying all this. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. <laughs> it's like everywhere, everywhere you look. Okay, let me see if I can show you. 
without snapping a root tip like I did with my insolence. Okay, I can't point because of the angle, but in that fan, a uh, centimeter, a finger down, you can see protrusion. There's one spike. I saw two. That's why I went, well, well, wait, wait, wait. That's why I thought, I'm going to have to show you. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me circle this one once again, because here, well, thank you so much, Fernanda, for telling me, because I'm like, uh, the fan that's now center screen, you can see, you have to really look hard, but you can see a protrusion. Second leaf down from the right. I hope so anyway. And I have a few fans that are also mature enough that should push a spike. And I have two new fans that grew last year. I think they're still a little bit immature. And yes, if I look around this, I'm not going to show you because it's getting precarious. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> but uh, this fan has a spike. Anyway, cartwheels around the patio. We're in business. Oh, and then as we were talking about anosmum, let me put this one back. It's just, I'm, it's too dangerous with me around here. I'm telling you, if I can't find my hydrogen peroxide, can you imagine what else is going on <laughs> that I don't dare share? <laughs> let me just, uh, if you hear crackling, it could be just the distance that I'm away with the mic. Blooming early time. Let me bring the anosmum. At least we can look at some buds. <laughs> My pride and joy. Okay, you can laugh. It's okay. All right. Because <laughs> I have to. <laughs> Excuse me. It's okay if, if, if you have a giggle. I'm not offended because, I mean, hello. <laughs> This is the longest cane she came with this cane. So I didn't see any blooms on anything like this, but this cane is 20 centimeters, maybe 30, 35 centimeters. So this was her claim to fame when she arrived and it's only now starting to absorb itself. I haven't cut it off until it's absolutely paper thin. If I keep squeezing it, it'll be paper thin very, very quickly. Then she tried this one. Yeah, this orchid was patetico. There was something else attached at the back that died very, very quickly. So she was holding on to the mount, limb and a prayer, just with this cane and something in the back that died. So we've got that, that. So she tried, she tried, but this cane grew last year and yeah, <laughs> now I shouldn't be so discouraged because giving it a closer look, no, sorry, this cane grew in 2021. Getting confused with my years here. This is 2022. So I shouldn't be too discouraged. I'm not saying the setup is a hit <laughs> by no means. Don't think I'm going, yeah, put your anosmum in semi, in semi hydro, lack of self watering is going to work a treat. But maybe I should, you know, just see that there's a couple of centimeters length. Okay. So here's the new growth coming. The single one. Oh, I love my, I have to say, I know I keep talking about my Bensonier, but I have to add my polyanthem to that now as well, because, uh, oh, to see dendrobiums coming with multiple new growths when I'm dying for this one and the unicum to, uh, hello, again, one, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to be picky. I'll take it. But, you know, it's like, ah, uh, if you do, if you do, oh, king, no. If you do something wrong with the one new growth that you have, then it's trouble, especially when an orchid is this weak. So yeah, I'm knocking Benaki. So yeah, so I'm kind of expecting double the length here. That's for sure. So I'm just noticing King, no. I'm sorry, I have to tell him not to jump on me, A, because I don't like it. Um, because if I have somebody walking in the door, I don't want them to jump. I don't like dogs that come at you and, you know, you are fussing with a dog. You should be fussing your, with your guest. 
Secondly, he's a wiener dog. I had a wiener dog in Kenya and nobody paid attention. And once he was like jumping and all excited and he broke his back and I will never ever forgive someone for not being careful enough with him. He's an extremely heavy and solid stocky wiener dog. So I don't want anything to happen to his back. I cannot afford the vet bills. And then my hip. If he tries to jump and he's all sweet and kind, he hits my right knee. That is a huge issue because the right side is almost all, almost not functioning properly anymore. And it's starting with the hip, it's going down to the knee. And when he comes up with his big paws, because for me, they're like German shepherd paws. They're so fat, chubby and huge and cute. Yes, and cute. Especially when he does his little seal thing. He's on his back and his, his little paws, he does his little seal thing. It's the cutest thing ever, but it's extremely painful on my right side. And of course, he always goes for my right side. It, it's like they know. I got to keep pushing on that one. It's like they think they're going to fix it. It's not going to get fixed. Anyway, that's about me and my dog and why I don't want him to jump. <laughs> side note, <laughs> squirrel. Anyway, let's have a look see. She does look like a tulumnia, yes. Thankfully, she is not a scale magnet like my tulumnias, which are doing okay. They are getting a little bit of sun now, and they can have some sun. We've had a lot of cloud all this other time. Sorry if you see any dog hairs flying around. And also, I've never had a wiener dog that sheds. This one is a shedder. Incredible. My anosmum never bloomed for me, and I had it for five years. Oh, wow. It is a pink one, yes. It's a hot pink one, Michelle. Two more than yours, yes. One for you, one for me, Fernanda. <laughs> I'm, look, King, I'm looking forward to the raspberry because even just two blooms, it's just going to smell nice on my patio. I remember that smell, the intensity of it when she bloomed while she was still on the mount. You have a chow chow? That's sweet. They know. Yes, Sandy, they do know. But it's like, okay, then you need to protect my right side and not aggravate it, you know? You're welcome, Fernanda. Let me just say, if we are around Fernanda in, do, do I dare call five years a good time to say she's going to be big and vigorous enough to divide? <laughs> If yours doesn't pick up pace by then, you can have a division of this one. I don't want to jinx it because so far we're just seeing a little bit of a, what are you doing? But anyway, that's what I was saying about winter resters in a pot. This pot doesn't dry out, okay? And you can still see the remnants of the scrubby pad in the back from when she was on the mount. I didn't even remove that. was not going to mess around with the few roots that she had. So... This, I flush it through ever so often during the winter, even though the orchid looks like this all around. Anyway, yours, yours is short, yeah. Now, you know, I know anosmans can grow lengthy, lengthy canes. I know they can do that because I actually went back, Fernanda, a, a while ago and thought maybe only the hybrids like the Nestor or something like that can go grow that long. No, that's rubbish. That's me just trying to make concessions for something that should be a vigorous orchid and it's not. But considering where it came from, it's not like I'm saying I'm settling, I'm not surprised. No, I'm annoyed. I'm super annoyed. So there's still some orchids that, you know, like I said in one video, I still have in my collection. And yeah, they remind me. I have PTSD from that order, I swear. So while she's here, because she lives next to the tortilla, I'm just going to pick. Oh, King, Arret! Jasta, you be a good boy. Sorry if I shouted in your ear, but the pain is excruciating. It's like a knife is being stabbed into my hip joint. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to put some alcohol on this little growth. <laughs> it is a precious commodity <laughs> while not popping off a bud. <laughs> so, so 
So I've been um, misting the tortilla as well with garlic alcohol because new growth on tortilla, the mealybugs go, oh, hello. Don't want that either. New growth on Dendrobium nobili, the mealybugs. Oh, hello. Look at all this fresh goodness. Yeah, not happening. Anyway, let's have a look, see. Yours are short too, Michelle. Yes, it is another Schwerter, Julian son. Yes, it is. It's the Schwerter OG and the only ever Schwerter order I had. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yes, I started changing the tags, as you can see, because for reasons, all my Schwerter orchids have Schwerter tags, just in case people don't believe me. At the time when I was complaint, filing, not filing a complaint, but sending my complaints over, documenting pictures, I stopped short. She was one of the very first, you know, where I thought I'm going to make all my tags. So you see my original tag here, and then I stopped. So I think there's two or three orchids from Schwerter with my tags. And I thought, no, 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 no. I don't want anybody telling me that this orchid did not come because my tags don't show the Schwerter on it. But um, others, all the tags of Schwerters that I have left are still with their original tag. It annoys me to no end. But on the other hand, I needed that, that reminder. Meanwhile, I also messed up. Okay, some orchids, uh, like my little fairy, uh, we'll be dealing with, the, with those bifoliates. That's the Zagreg wax as well. She didn't come from Schwerter, but the little fairy, the Katliantha little fairy, she grew super well. I messed up, okay? So I'm going to be extremely transparent. If you see a Schwerter tag on that one, when we feature that one in a video, that that's not Schwerter. But goodness me, if I showed you the order and I tick off all the orchids that I've lost because of that order and the condition that they were in, if I had, if I had filmed it, I, I can't describe it. I would also probably have a problem filming it because I was so m mad. I was furious, you know, and the fury extended itself for four to six weeks. Now you can hear it still somewhat in my voice. It's more frustration, but fury rage. <laughs> I don't think it would have been a very diplomatic video because at the time I was not controlling my political correct language. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh my goodness. You have three new growths. Oh, I am so envious. Sandy's orchids and Osman was short as well. Gosh, now I don't feel so bad. One new growth. You also always had issues with your orders there. Isn't that astounding? I have as yet to see an unboxing video from Schwerter that hasn't been absolutely top notch. Meanwhile, I'm not going to test them again. I don't care if my wish list orchid is on there from six years ago. I do not care. I am not going for them anymore, ever, ever again. I mean, not even to address me or anything like that. The, the order was short. The, the cost of the order from Schwerter was short of four figures before the decimal. We're talking, I don't like talking money. But back in the day, I had pretty much filled my collection to have sourced all the orchids I wanted. And I, I targeted Schwerter last because I went through the web page one by one, looked at everything I wanted. They were just, uh, I'm not saying fluff, but they were orchids that weren't the urgent orchids, but I thought, yeah, I'd like to grow that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. I planned my collection that way just to make sure that the orchids that I wanted, they came into my collection as soon as possible. The Schwerter order was my last one to fill in the space that I had, etc., etc. And I was short of four digits of an order. And they couldn't even reply after I sent them image after image, I sent them images of how the orchids looked in the box, the media on top of summer bloomers, stuff like that. On, on, on the reed stem epidendrums that you've seen, the little fine canes that only now are beginning to show some kind of life. One of them, of course, has bloomed for us, but you, you know what I mean? The shock 
after having watched unboxing videos and everybody was like, oh, and they package so well, and then this is taped here, and this is over there, the pots are in their own little tray, blah, blah, blah. I got boxes that were um, taped on top of each other. The media was on the, in the same box as my summer bloomers, but the summer bloomers were at the bottom. And on top of that box was another box of more orchids taped together. So the bottom box with the summer bloomers was the most volatile, the most delicate, and media was in that same box on top. I couldn't believe it. And no, it wasn't like somebody made a mistake and flipped the box the wrong way around and then taped it, because you could see the outside of the box this way up. Insane. I'm having a rant, I'm sorry. I hope everybody is still with me because I'm now looking up at the air, shaking my head, moving my arms. <laughs> so in the first six weeks, I lost, uh, I don't want to exaggerate. Let's say the order was about 75 orchids. I, I would have to count. I would have to look at my list. But anyway, I sent them images. I sent them the state of the orchids, la la la, and I asked. And then I thought, okay, never mind the English, let's talk in German. Same thing in German, crickets. And I thought, you know what? I have never, ever left a bad review. If I don't like something, I don't say anything. If I like something, sometimes I go to the trouble of leaving a review on anything that I shop, you know, not just orchids. But I, normally I don't bother. But anyway, so I thought I'm gonna leave, leave a review. Unfortunately, I, had, I didn't have the option of no stars. I had to give them one star. And I tried in English, and I did a second review, repeated the same thing in German. I got crickets, nothing, nothing. And by Christmas, I was over it, because this order arrived in September. By Christmas, I was over it. Not really, because you can still hear it in my voice. <laughs> If I'm allowed to let go, oh, oh boy, anybody that wants to listen, hoo -hoo, there's more where that came from. <laughs> but we'd have to go behind the scenes. It's not terms of service friendly. <laughs> okay, Clint, Clint and Carmen, I keep wanting to say that. Sorry, Carmen, I do like a lot of nurseries. What I'm going to do is put the nurseries into the comment section of this live stream once it's up and processed, okay? Because um, Orchid Garden, I think, has improved. I'm not entirely sure. I wasn't too pleased with them. They were hit and miss. But I know that uh, Fernanda has had diabolical um, quality from Orchid Garden. So I don't want to turn you off. If your orchids have been great, then keep, you know, keep going. I have a feeling they may have improved since their early days. But if I start to tell you all the German names that I remember, do not go for Klassen, that's all I can say, but I'll put that into the comments of this video when it's up processed for the replay, okay? Curling has always looked good to me. I got a gift box from Anonymous last summer, I believe it was. I believe it was last summer from Curleen. I had never ordered from them before because I didn't like that they didn't have the variety I was looking for. But for the Tolumnias, absolutely, because my Tolumnias came from Curleen in that gift box from Anonymous. Michelle Fucarino. Oh, Michelle Fucarino, the two of you, you with your Italian name and Carmen in Italy. <laughs> oh. Wow, the fact that you're in the US, Michelle, to this day, it astounds me with your name. I know, I'm profiling, I'm sorry, forgive me. But I would have placed bets, and I'm not a gambling woman, I would have placed bets you are in Italy when I saw your name first on the channel. You're very welcome, Carmen. Yes, good point, Julian San, I forgot that. Carmen, take a mental note. Orchid Garden, next time you have to remind them to send the plants dry, no matter the season. That is correct. Now King is playing with the last wilted bloom that fell off of insolence before we repotted. Oh my goodness, he doesn't stop. Secret Garden is in Poland as well, I think. I've never ordered from them. Yeah, the, the media. Yeah, Sicilian, there you go. You're very welcome, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you for your support, for being here, 
on your Sunday afternoon. And everybody else that's been here as well, if you don't have any more questions, I'm planning another live stream with uh, Trisha's Orchid Life. We're going to be talking about Phalaenopsis Rescue. I'm not the expert. She is. <laughs> I'm going to learn a lot. But we're going to do that one together. I just have to, we've confirmed the date, but the time is a bit different because she's in Colorado, USA. So it's kind of, you know, I would like to be in daylight. This is quite pleasant, actually, to be streaming in daylight. <laughs> So that will be the, I don't know if it's next week, but it won't be on a Sunday. It'll probably be on a Friday, but I will make sure to schedule the event soon enough. By the way, oh, before I love and leave you, um, I have a question. So I'm filming on my daughter's Android device because I'm going via, via the YouTube app. So feedback, feedback. Okay, I need some feedback from you guys that are here. I'm filming on an Android via the YouTube app in order, oh, mad, in order to do this. And uh, I'm looking at an, an Apple device, an iPhone, to follow the chat so that I can answer questions. When I was looking for, let's say, notifications, etc., I noticed that, yes, um, my daughter's device is also subscribed to my channel. Every little helps, <laughs> so like the video, like the stream, please. <laughs> Every little helps. You know, a little bit of kindling can make a huge bonfire. That's what I would like to happen with my channel. But anyway, I have tapped all the notifications, like I want all from the options that you have. So it tells me you will get all notifications, but on both systems, both operating systems, my bell does not populate to black. It does when I hit the option, that bell in the little menu, that stays black and that darkens. But the bell on the outside that shows that you're subscribed, that used to go black and now it's not. It's just an outline. Do you have, do you notice something like that with your phones as well? Just a question because this no notification thing, it's bugging me. It really is. Because it says to me, yeah, you'll be getting all the notifications. And I'm like, really? Because the feedback's been a little bit different to, uh, to that. I do not belong to any orchid society at all. Now, there is an orchidarium in Estepona. I do intend to visit it. It's just on a long list of things that I do intend to do one day and um, it'll happen. But it is, you know, other things are going on on the patio right now that need my attention. Um, I don't know if they have an orchid society there or not. But when I Google orchid societies in Estepona or Marbella or something like that, I come up with nothing. There's nothing. So... Even Orchid Society Malaga. Nope. The closest Orchid Society when I Google my area in Spain shows up in Valencia. And that's about 12 hours north of me driving. <laughs> Beautiful place, but um, nope. Same with you, Fernanda. You get the notifications, Julian's son, but really delayed. So the notification, Julian, that you get when I go live comes delayed or the no notification when I set the event 24 hours or in this case I did it two days in advance. I'm sorry to be asking you like this but it's like in a video it's like I don't get immediate feedback and I'd like to bounce off some ideas. It stays black on the channel. You see mine is just an outline. YouTube text attain. I know. I know they are. Even now, the live chat, you can't find it straight away. You're on Android, okay? So my daughter's device is Android as well. There's just an outline. I even unsubscribed to then subscribe again and then do the all option again to see if that would change and nothing happened. Yes, I have not forgotten Mr. It. They're doing fantastic seeing as I have two people in here. Let me show you your pieces. Let me see if you approve. If you still have the time, if you would like to see your pieces, I'll bring baby it. Just one moment. 
just one moment. Well, I am going to do a video, but I do want to show Fernanda and Carmen how baby it is doing. And again, forgive the look of the leaves, that is cold damage, but they are only there for now to support the little ones until they themselves and their growths start to look a lot better. So I was going to do an update video and I'm still going to do that for general consumption because it is important to understand what happens to maxillaria cuttings when you've cut them. And there's no need to panic when you see, for example, right here, Carmen, this is your piece that I've put aside, that the pseudobulbs are shrinking. All right, that is absolutely normal. That is to be expected. Now, I miss them every day, several times a day if necessary. If it's been a very breezy day like today, I miss them every day with, for example, sometimes weak fertilizer, 100 parts per million like my tolumnias because of the root system that is in here. Okay, all the way up in here are roots. So the only thing that needs to happen, it's already a long way to go to get some roots into the pot maybe some new growth at the base. I don't anticipate new growth at the base because the new growths are coming up here. But once these ship and you guys have them, then you can in future anticipate new growths at the base as well. And here is for Fernanda. I've got you here tagged FFF. See? They're not ready to ship. I did discuss it with Fernanda, if she wants them from the moment they were cut. And she said, oh, I'll leave that up to you. So I said, okay, I'm not shipping them. <laughs> For no other reason, but so that you don't have the stress of watching what's going on with shriveled pseudobulbs, wondering if everything's going to be okay. They're gonna stay with me throughout the hottest months of the year. And then September, October, when everything's calmed down and cooled down, that's when I'll ship them, okay? just to let you know, but there will be regular updates. And once again, I do apologize when you see these unsightly leaves. It's uh, such a shame. You know, it never occurred to me to throw a towel on cousin it or even stand the man. I know better now. I know better now and that won't happen again. Something else will happen and I'll learn from that, but it was the first winter where, my goodness, cousin it just said, nah, not happening. So that's why these leaves don't look as pretty as they used to be, but there's nothing wrong with the pieces here. There's no water in the reservoir because I am misting them that often. Just in case anybody is wondering, they are in a semi-hydro setup, but that's just so the pot doesn't flood out. If I have to be heavy handed with the misting, there's drainage, but no water simply because there is no need. I'm really focusing on the roots in the bracts. Would you come here, please? Menaki, ikieto. Alrighty, so there's two. There's still two more left. Notification of live shows 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Mm. You're welcome, Carmen. You'll need little sweaters for them, yes. But at least at this time, when you get them, <laughs> you can have them inside. They won't take up much space. Don't come for me in five years, okay? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you, see, you see Big Daddy out there, so... Uh, <laughs> But anyway, there's another thing I did want to say. Okay, here's a 10, 15 minutes. That is astounding. Now, I have seen with other lives in other communities, not orchid related. I watch a lot of true crime. Let's say I listen to a lot of true crime. Is uh, They are complaining about notifications as well. So it's not just me because you can imagine I'm sitting here on my little island in Europe, I feel like I'm being shadow banned by YouTube with everything. And uh, at least this is not the case here. I'm not the only one, but it's so good to have your feedback. This is, I like this. Thank you so, so much. I know it seems very selfish and one-sided of me, and um, this is probably not super interesting for you, but I, this, this helps me a lot to get a better insight of what is happening with the channel. King, pero donde vas? Ven aquí. Goodness me. Goodness me. Okay. There we go. 
All righty. If nothing else, I am now going to love. I'll stick, I'll stick around loving you, but I'm going to leave you because Mr. Man here, I don't know what his problem is, but sometimes you got to listen to dogs. They're trying to tell you something, and it's not just because I'm talking to you. There's more going on because normally when I tell him two or three times, he will settle down and lie down, and he hasn't. So I'm going to make sure that he's okay, that nothing untoward is going on. And if he's tricking me, at least I gave him 30 minutes for him to understand I don't react this way just to appease him so we don't make a habit out of it. <laughs> you listen to me. I am the boss. It's all in the name, you know. <laughs> anyway, 16 likes. Oh, my goodness. He may need to go. Yes, um, maybe he's shy. I have a, uh, we, we have another 30 minutes normally for the timing because it's I'm trying to keep him from on the cool side of the day to go walking as hopefully one day it's going to be too warm for me to be wearing sneakers and we're back in flip-flops. Still not flip-flops, Fernanda. Can you believe it? So he's got 30 minutes to go, but okay. Hakuna Matata. But he's being a good boy. Oh my goodness, you guys. You guys, hang on a second. Okay, we're on the move. We're on the move. Oh no. Oh. Lie down. Make a good lie down. Okay, because I can't bend, I'm not kicking my dog. Lie down. Lie down. Good boy. I'm not kicking my dog, okay? Please don't see that with my foot as something that, um, I don't want to rotate the device. Okay, there you go, good boy. All right, <laughs> I need to sometimes just gently encourage him with my foot because I can't bend down and as part of my training, I've got him accustomed to have little nudges with my legs as opposed to, you know, going down, showing him stuff and all that fun stuff, so. Don't think, please, that I train my dog with, with kicks and, you know, nudges in the ribs. I don't. <laughs> anyway, I know his paws, right? That's what I'm talking about, Fernanda. They are so cute when he does that. This is how he wakes up in the morning when, when I get up and I come out of the bathroom, etc. He's on his bed all lush, and I call him Casanova now. <laughs> His name is King, but I say good morning, Casanova, because he's like, hello, and his paws are like there. And then he does the little beaver thing, you know, when they have their rocks on their back. He does that with his paws. It's just the sweetest thing. Oops, you're looking at a floor now. That's not good. I'm getting carried away. But it's the sweetest thing ever, except for when they bash up against my right side. That is when it's like, mm, mercy. Okay, <laughs> now, take three, <laughs> Seven, 17 likes, ah, awesomeness. Anyway, it was so nice to have you here on the patio. We got through the li little bit of rain that was around at the beginning, and here we are. We're going to follow Insolence's progress. Michelle Fucarino, one more time, huge, massive hand hearts. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you also to everybody for being here. Love you. I say it. I mean it. Your support is appreciated. Have yourself a fabulous rest of your day. And if you're in the United States, happy Memorial Weekend. Memorial Day weekend, I think, is this weekend. Not entirely sure. Ciao, Bella, Carmen. Everybody else, just that one condition, though, please. That you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Here's me waving with my hand. Bye. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> I, was, I was standing here on the patio going, bye. <laughs> I'm like, who sees this? <laughs> oh, dear. Take care.